Before I, I send it over to Frank for an opening statement, Frank, we have a special, uh, some special messages from a special group for you. What's up, Coach, man? I got the good news about your extension, man. I wanted to reach out and congratulate you and tell you that I'm happy for you. I'm proud to know that you're still going to be leading the University of South Carolina my home. And, you know, I wish you nothing but success and more wins in the future. Much love, Sin. Congrats on the contract extension, Coach. I know this uh, program is in capable hands. Uh, you took me in and made me the person and player I am today, and I can't wait to see what you do with the guys next year. Uh, that's a spot that yeah, you definitely earn and deserve. And uh, uh, good luck for the year coming. Go get them. Go Cox. Congratulations on your extension. You've given Gamecock Nation some great memories so far, and I know you and the guys will give us some more moving forward. So once again, congrats and go Cops. Coach, what's up, man? Woke up to some really great news this morning. So I uh, wanted to reach out and congratulate you on your extension at the University of South Carolina. Uh, myself and I speak for other former players uh, that we are excited, man, to continue to have you as the men's basketball coach at the University of South Carolina. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, made my day, man, to, to hear that information. So. Can't wait to talk to you. God bless. Hi, it's Dwayne Notice here. Super excited about USC giving Frank the extension. I'm just jealous that I didn't get an extension so I could play under him a little bit longer. Um, playing for him meant so much for my career as well as for my brothers and everybody else that played for Frank. And I'm just happy that we were able to establish so many great memories there. And I know that signing him back is going to allow him to create some more memories for the institution and the program. So let's continue to fight and continue to put USC on the map. Again, congratulations, Frank, and go Gamecocks. All right, Frank, if you want to give us an opening statement, and then everyone just please raise your hand for questions. Uh, well, that's, uh, <laughs> uh, that's why I coach. That's why, uh, that's why I became a school teacher uh, in my neighborhood back whenever the heck it was 30 years ago or so. Uh, that's why I get out of bed every day and I'm excited about my job. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I sit here and, and I'm listening to those guys and, you know, they're all proud uh, graduates. Uh, I, I know in today's day and age, no one cares about that anymore. Uh, they're all proud graduates in the University of South Carolina with the exception of PJ. Uh, uh, and uh, they're all living a dream right now, and they're all successful men. Uh, that's why I coach. That's that's why I get out of bed every day and uh, and do my job. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, but I, I <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. You know, watching that, it's got my mind racing. I wish I can run practice tomorrow morning, and uh, uh, and have a game next week, and and go at it with. Uh, uh, the team that we got in place, but um, uh, obviously you guys got a whole bunch of stuff you want me to talk about, but a quick synopsis of uh, um, uh, the season was uh, real simple. Uh, it was the most challenging year of uh, my professional career. Um, it was really difficult. Uh, it was uh, complicated personally and uh, um, uh, just did, you know, I, 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 I've 36 years on the sideline, 29 as a head coach. I've had one bad year, uh, which was this past year. I excuse my French, but I can't use another word. I did a shitty job of coaching this past year. Um, and uh, uh, I just, uh, I, I, I didn't manage things the right way. And, uh, uh, and, and, and then uh, some of the personal stuff I went through made it really, really difficult for me to, uh, to do my job. But, but all that's behind me. Uh, it's, I learned a lot this past season. Uh, it's, uh, um, I'm excited about what's in front of us. I'm excited uh, uh, to, to, you know, to, to move forward. I'm excited about uh, the job. I'm excited about where I'm at. I'm excited about everything. Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, as I as the season ended, and I, I do what I do every year, which is I separate and and take uh, 
anywhere from three to four days to reflect on not not the season, uh, reflect on me, on how I did my job and what I need to do better and what I didn't do right. Uh, I was really unhappy with what I did this year. Uh, I was unhappy with uh, a lot of things, uh, the way they just broke this year. Uh, but as I reflected, I also realized how lucky I am that I've been a head ball coach 29 years and I've had one bad year. And uh, <laughs> when, when you can actually reflect and say that, uh, uh, you, 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 you tend to realize that you've been pretty lucky that, that you've been fortunate to do your job fairly well uh, for the majority of your career. And uh, uh, so, so because of that, I was able to, to re-engage into uh, moving forward. And, and I'm as excited as I was the day I got hired here. Uh, my first press conference, and, and I refer to that all the time because I didn't walk in here and promise people wins or Final Fours or, or and none of that stuff. I promised uh, the only two things I promised was that my guys were going to represent the university the right way and that my team would always go out and make everyone proud because of how hard it played and the way it played the game. And uh, for nine years, I've been here nine years now. Unbelievable time flies. Uh, for the first eight years, that was the case each and every single day and each and every single game our teams played. This past year, that wasn't the case. And, uh, and I take sole responsibility for that. I've, I've, I've always taken responsibility for the bad and I try to give uh, the responsibility of the good to the players where it belongs. And uh, it's what I've done my whole life and I'm not going to change now. And uh, so uh, we're going to fix the things that we did wrong and uh, excited about moving forward and, and uh, um, you know, and see what the future holds, man. It's uh, life is beautiful and, and I get to coach ball every single day. And that's, that's, uh, uh, you know, some people have never done anything else. I have, I, I'd rather, I'd rather do this than landscaping or wash dishes or get shot at at a bar at 2.30 in the morning. It's, uh, this is a hell of a lot easier than the alternative. So, uh, and, and I'll, let me speak on the recruits. Um, uh, four transfers, I'll talk with, about the two local guys first. Chico Carter and uh, uh, James Reese, uh, two guys that, um, uh, and I'm not going to get into details as to why, uh, not today, maybe in the future, but not today. Uh, coming out of high school, uh, I, I always looked back at those two and said, I think I made a mistake because I didn't offer those two a scholarship. They were two of my favorite players that I watched play here in, in the Midlands area uh, in my time here. And, and I always uh, looked back and was like, hmm, I I probably messed up not offering those guys a scholarship. And uh, uh, then when James, when James transferred uh, out of the junior, when he transferred from Buffalo to junior college, when he was done at Odessa, we, uh, we didn't need a guard in that class. Uh, and so I just, I never pursued him. I wasn't going to, I don't recruit just to make it sound good. I recruit to be genuine. Um, and I just wasn't going to do that with him. And, uh, but this year, this time around, uh, one's a point guard, one's an off guard. Um, they both play with a tenacity, with an athleticism. Uh, the one thing I like about all four guys, they're ball hawks. I mean, they, they see the ball, they go after the ball. And, <clears throat> and, uh, but those two guys are, are, are going to bring tremendous toughness, uh, character, uh, talent, shooting, um, just uh, I'm excited for both of those guys, along with being local kids that that both at the end of the day, their dream was to play in South Carolina. So it's like I told both of them. My wife turned me down seven times, man. She finally said yes. And now she's stuck with me. And, you know, I, 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 I said no the first time around. I wasn't making that mistake this time. Uh, I was going to bring those two guys home. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that they're both coming home and worrying that uh, – you know, the, the same joy, some of those guys that you just saw in that video, which got my mind going in different places, but um, uh, 
you know, th those kids that are from here, they get to surround their heart every time they play with the name on the back of the jersey, which is who they are, with the name on the front of the jersey, which is the, the state, the, the city, the area that they represent. And uh, what a special place that is to, uh, to do that when you play. And I'm excited for them. And uh, Eric Stevenson, somebody that we recruited a year ago uh, when he was leaving Wichita State, another ball hawk, another guy that can shoot. He's, he's a play. All three guys are playmakers. Um, and what I mean by playmakers is they're willing to make plays on offense and defense. They're not one trick ponies. Uh, so it's uh, um, Eric's uh, dynamic personality. He's aggressive. I know this, when, when we were getting ready to play Wichita State last year in Cancun, watching him on film, I was like, I like this guy. And then we went out and played, and he absolutely, he single-handedly destroyed us and created the, the mindset and the tempo for the game. And, um, and um, just uh, we, in a game that we, we really had no chance to win. Um, tried to recruit him a year ago. He wanted to go home. Um, obviously, going home didn't work out the way he planned, and um, uh, he was excited as excited can be when when we called this time around. And then lastly, AJ Wilson. Um, I, I I loved him in high school uh, because of the aggression that he played with, <clears throat> uh, but offensively he was very underdeveloped at that stage. Um, went to George Mason, had a heck of a career there, uh, was the Atlantic 10 most improved player uh, after his junior season. Um, and uh, uh, he, he chases that ball, man. He, he blocks shots, he rebounds offensively, defensively, he runs a court. Uh, offensively, he's improved drastically. Uh, so I, I'm excited about all four guys. And when you combine those guys with the, the three freshmen we signed in the early signing period, and, uh, uh, and then you you uh, uh, you add them to the returning guys that we got in place. Guys have been really productive for us in their time here. Uh, I'm excited for 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 what we can put together. All right, we'll start with Dave, followed by Rick Henry. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Frank, it's really good to see you again. I hope you're feeling well. Um, two questions: one, how are you feeling, and two. In your own words, just what was this past month like uh, from a timeline perspective? Just what all broke down so that we're all talking here today? Dave, I could have sworn you were ready not to see me anymore. Some of the stuff you put out there, but, you know, that's your prerogative. You write whatever you want to write. Um, uh, but unfortunately, you are stuck seeing me, so we're going to have fun with it. Um, I, this month has been no. Here's the deal. You know, some of you guys need better sources, by the way. I'm a pretty good source. Those of you guys that lean on me, I tell you the truth. I never hide from you. Some of you guys need better sources. Uh, the timeline this year has been no different than the timeline in my first eight years here. None. I always take four or five days after the season to regroup, gather my thoughts, whether it's been years of contracts and conversations are not taking place or it's been the years – where we have some deep conversations <clears throat> and uh, the timeline was no different this year. Same way. I took four or five days to just kind of gather my thoughts. Um, uh, and then, you know, we, 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 I don't have player meetings for two weeks. I never do. Uh, I wait two weeks from the end of the season to when I start player meetings. Cause that's when we start our workouts again. We did nothing different. Because of the, uh, I don't know, the stories that, that I know we live in a society where everyone's trying to blame. I don't blame anybody. We all do what we need to do. I, I'm, I worry about getting my guys to be on the same page. I worry about uh, my staff. I worry about me being an honest man every single day of my life. I, I worry about me doing my job. I worry about me leading. I did a poor job of leading this year. Um, uh, so, you know, I, 36 years in this business, I've done a pretty good job of leading up until this year. I'm going to do it well again next year. But stories were kind of created by somebody, not by me, not by Ray Tanner, by somebody. And some guys that are on the call today, which is on your, your guys, it's your guys' prerogative. I don't tell you guys, I, I don't want you guys ever calling me, telling me how to call timeouts. I'm not ever going to tell you guys how to do your jobs. Some of you guys communicated with me directly. So I told you where I was at with things. 
some of you guys chose to run and, you know, and, and create stories. Uh, and if you created the stories based on information somebody was giving you, that's why I say you need better sources. Uh, but after two weeks, you know, Ray Tanner and I spoke a couple times before those two weeks. After two weeks, I started meeting with players. Um, I handled things the way I normally do. I, I, it was no different. Now, if you guys thought for some reason that I was going to have a press conference to bring the attention on me based on some of the stories that have been created last week while Don Staley and her team were chasing a national championship, you guys are out of your minds if you think I'm going to take the platform away from them. Uh, I'm not doing that. Uh, and then number two, I went on vacation last week. Me and my family, we, we, I had not seen my mother in, at, but for two hours in August in over a year. Uh, me and my family snuck into Miami and we went to enjoy my mother. And, and, uh, and I went to try and, you know, since my eyebrows are starting to grow back, I don't know if you guys can see that. You know, I went and tanned my bald head now. So I can kind of look like a normal human being again, best I can. And, uh, uh, but I feel great, Dave. I appreciate you asking. I, I haven't felt as good. I'm probably down 25 pounds from where I was at back in the season. Um, uh, you know, I, I might need, maybe, maybe you guys are right. Maybe I needed a new career and uh, uh, I'm starting to get really strong in that weight room again. I, I might just go back to bouncing, see if I can still throw people around a little bit, you know, or get my ass thrown around. Maybe that's, that'd be a better alternative. But I'm doing great, and uh, but the timeline's been no different than what I've always done. I've never done anything any differently. I wasn't taking the spotlight away from Don having my press conference while they're chasing a national championship. By the way, congratulations, Aaliyah Boston, Destiny Henderson, the courage to make the shots that she was making to keep them in that game. And then Aaliyah Boston, my heart goes out to her because you know what most players would have done in that situation? They would have stood and watched the person – can't remember who shot the ball that missed before she gets the offensive rebound. Most players would have stood there and watched. She chased it. She did her job, but she just missed the dink. She'll be there. She'll make the play the next time. But uh, what, uh, how much fun to watch that team play. Rick and then Mike Gillespie. Hey, Frank. Good to see you this morning. Uh, was this all season or the, the last month, was it more frustrating than it's been in – uh, let's see, other all seasons, just because of what what transpired this season, and you know everyone was waiting on a decision. But but for you, was it frustrating? And also, how would you describe uh, your relationship with um, Coach Tanner now after going through this process the past month? Yeah, you know, Rick, I, I keep hearing uh, this deal about a decision. I, I you know I don't know what the decision. I mean, obviously a story was created. I got no idea where that story came from. Didn't come from me. Didn't come from Ray Tanner. If it did, you guys need to put that out there. Like, you know, Ray Tanner and I get along great. We always have, always will. I, I don't know if maybe you guys don't pay attention sometimes. When I signed my contract at, before the Final Four and then I signed the new one after the Final Four, I've always said the reason I stayed here was Ray Tanner. That has never changed. You know, it's, uh, uh, I love the fact that I work for a boss who tells me the truth. He's never lied to me. You know, I, I say this to every boss I've ever had. For me to get along with somebody, we got to have a hard conversation and an easy conversation the same exact way. That means we trust each other. That means that we're on the same page. And, 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 and that's the most, the most frustrating offseason I've ever had as a head coach was after my fourth year here because we got railroaded onto the NCAA tournament. And then I had the BB gun incident at the same situation. That was a most, that was a frustrating month after a season for me. And you know why, you know why I recovered from that, that moment when that season ended Cinderish Thornwell, the guy you just saw in that video, him and Dwayne notice came in my office and they were like, Hey, when are we going back to work? And I was like, man, I need a couple of weeks, man. Like, we need to get back in the gym because whatever we did wasn't good enough. And I sat back in my chair and I was like, wow, these dudes are really special. So here's the grown man that's supposed to lead following the courage of two college juniors. And, and, and so we went back to work and then, you know, the following year's history. And I think we know what happened there. And, uh, but 
this past month it's been no different for me you know i don't rick i don't get caught up in innuendos i don't get caught up on false narratives i don't really care for social media i think you guys know that by me i don't actually read it i stopped reading social media about a year ago uh lately i've put some stuff on social media and that's usually guys in my office that asked me to put like, you know, some of these recruits put stuff, you know, something on there that they want me to retweet or whatever it may be. So I go on there and I, I, I retweet something just to help the people in our office. Social media is disgusting. It is the new gangbangers of, of the world. It used to be going to school and you had, I don't know about some of you guys, but I had to worry about when I walked to school sometimes because you never knew what was going to happen. You had to worry about what side of the hallway you walked sometimes. You had to worry about what lockers you went by. Uh, back, remember, when we still had lockers. Nobody has lockers anymore. But, you know, it, it's now it's social media. That is, that is disgusting what happens on social media, the, the, the gangbanging mentality that goes on in that place. So uh, I, I got no time for that. I, I, I don't read it. I can care less what's on there. I don't do my job to police people on social media. Uh, you know, Rick, you've given me the opportunity to get in some unbelievable conversations with a powerful group of men um, uh, from Brooklyn Baptist North, uh, uh, Brooklyn Baptist Church, not Northeast, that's Chap. Um, and that's real. Like, I'll do that every day of my life. I'm not going on social media and, and, and dealing with the negativity and that, that, that stupid mentality that exists there. So I can care less what social media says what false narratives are out there. I know my conversations with my bosses. They were no different this year than what they've always been. And, uh, you know, and so I'm, I'm, this month has been uh, frustrating for me because I didn't do my job, not because of anything else. I, every year the season ends and when I reflect, I'm unhappy about some things I did. This year I was unhappy with the fact that I did a crappy job. I did not do my job very well. Some of it because of my ha my uh, uh, doings, others because of things that happened that I couldn't control. And, you know, hey, hey, Rick, listen, I hit rewind and I do it every year. The fact that we're coming off and I'm not getting into a, a, like statistics to make it sound like I've done my job good around here. The six winning seasons, so six consecutive winning seasons since the 70s at this school. I obviously have done something right. When, when, when I sit back and, and, and I look backwards and I realize that I didn't have an office for two and a half years here. I didn't have a room to meet with a recruit or, or players until after the final four. So my first five years, I didn't have a room to meet with recruits and their families when they came on campus. Uh, me and my staff have done some good things and I'm really proud of what we've done. So I had no reason other than to trust the conversations with the guys that I answered to, Ray Tanner, Bob Caslin, that I, I you know, uh, you know, that they told me the truth. And uh, if they had told me something differently, Rick, I would have, I, I told you guys a long time ago, the days I'm not wanted, I don't need gossip. I just need somebody to tell me and I'll crawl underneath the rock I crawled out of 15 years ago. They, and no one will ever hear from me again. You know why, Rick? Because I do it for those guys who just came on that video before this thing started. That's what I get out of bed and do this for every day. I don't do it for fame, money, uh, appease people, make people happy. No, I do it to help young men become men. And, and, and they, take, take, they take pride in what we do. So uh, the last four weeks have been, I was on vacation last week. I was loving life down there with my mother in Miami, um, you know, and, you know, but the conversations, I don't, you don't like, I didn't have these conversations with Ray Tanner I had this year after the, the year after the final four, not the final four, because that year was a new contract. The year after when Frank Booker was a senior, we spoke on some things like we always did, but they weren't as deep as this year. Why were they deeper this year? Because I did a real crappy job this past year. And we needed to make sure that like, I, like, I think I said this at one of my last press conferences, uh, he needed to make sure that I understood what was broken and that we can get it right again. That's it. And he coached, he understands. And, and that's the beauty of having someone like him as a boss. Mike and then Dick Cox. 
Hey, Frank, you, you definitely just alluded to it, but do you feel right now that you are supported by the University of South Carolina? I know you feel supported by Ray Tanner, but do you feel like you have the support from the USC brass? And then number two, was there any moment maybe in the last month where you said, okay, if I don't get this contract extension, I've got to start looking elsewhere? Yeah, I, you know, Mike, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm an old offensive lineman. I don't need hugs, kisses. I don't need celebrate. I don't need people to celebrate me. I just need people to look at me and say, I need you. That's it. I, I, don't, I don't need people going on social media. I've been here nine years. How many people at the university have publicly run around and endorsed me being the basketball coach here in my nine years? You guys do the media part? Who? How many times you hear people around here like just running around saying, Woo, he's our coach. Yes. I'm talking about people at the university. I don't need that. That's not what that's not the, the, the straw that stirs my drink. I, I just need to be in a room with the people I answer to and for them to say, Frank, you know what? We're not happy with this, but you're our guy. That's all. I'm an offensive lineman, man. I'm going to knock the crap out of the guy in front of me so we can protect the quarterback or we can get the, to the first down. It, it's That's the way I, I grew up. That's who I am. And uh, that's why I've been here for nine years. That's why when the season ended, uh, I, I think it was at the press conference after the Ole Miss game, I, I had an existing contract. Like, you know, Mike, if anyone – ever felt you said about going somewhere else contrary to popular belief sometimes around here because i don't know this place kind of loves gloom and doom it's kind of it gets real popular when it's gloom and doom when it's success it's kind of real quiet especially in my sport but do you if anyone has actually paid attention to what i'm about i worked and my staff has worked and our players the guys that you just saw there really really hard to build a winning program now you can argue whatever you want. That's your prerogative. We built a winning program. When you when you have the winningest six year stretch since the seventies, you're doing something right. Okay. Do you think I'm going to walk away from my job after what just happened this past year? That's not the way I was raised, man. That's that's not the Frank Martin that I hope you guys have gotten to know. It's not what I do. Um, so I'm I'm. Do I feel they got my back? Yeah. Yeah. Now, is the contract extension exactly what I wanted? No. But there is a contract extension. So what, listen, my first year at K-State, I coached without a contract. They could have fired me on any day for zero. I had no contract, zero. I didn't sign the contract so after the NCAA tournament, after my first season, I never worried about it then, man. It, you know, I live, I've lived my life day to day, day to day. I don't live my life based on my contract. I live my life day to day. Every day I get out of bed, I got a chance to do what I do. I'm ecstatic. I don't need a contract to give me peace of mind. Peace of mind comes from the people you're with, the people you work for, the people you work uh, with, and your health. I'm healthy. I love what I do. I've been here nine years, man. I'm not, I'm not going to allow the efforts that everyone has put into building this program to, to end the way last year did. It's just not going to happen. And, 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 and another thing, contrary to the, you know, the, the, the narrative that, that some folks like putting out there that I'm this grisly, unlikable, like demon that everyone hates and no boss likes to manage and players despise and all this stuff. Um, un unlike the narrative that some people like to create, I actually get along with all my bosses. Always have, always will. I actually get along with all my peers on campus. I, you know, you can go ask academics, the, the budget people. You can go ask compliance. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm their favorite coach, but I kind of, I allow them to do their jobs. I'm, and that's not just here. That's everywhere I've ever been. I'm, I'm a team guy. I'm an offensive. Who, who hates offensive linemen? That, this is a football town. Who hates offensive linemen? Nobody. A lot of people hate the receivers. They hate the running backs. Who hates offensive? Nobody. That's who I am. I don't need people to celebrate me. I just, I just need the people I work with and work for to say, 
let's go. Done. I, that's all I ever need. And uh, but uh, but no, no. The the answer to the stuff you asked me about finding another job. The answer is no. Uh, I had an existing contract. Now, obviously, I'm not in control of whether I get to honor that contract. Sometimes they call you in and say, hey, thanks for what you've done. It's time to make a change. And one last thing on that topic. Nine years, the six winningest consecutive years since the 70s, the two winningest seasons as far as number of wins in the history of the school. And then that's the basketball side of it. And then the personal side of it. Man, this university's paid me a lot of money and allowed me to stay here for nine years. Do you really think that's unsuccessful? I, that means I've overachieved from where I was at 20 years ago, like no other. So I, I'm a place of peace, man. I love, I, I, I don't think you guys have ever, ever heard me say anything other than I love living here. I love my job. I love my boss. And you know, and we, we got work to do, man. What happened last year is unacceptable. I, I, don't, I don't need social media to know I did a bad job last year. I, I don't need you guys reporting I did a bad job. I, I do that on my own. I did a bad job. And, but what gives me a peace of mind is those guys you just heard speak, you know, that they're, they're excited that I'm the basketball coach here. And, and 28 out of 29 years as a head coach, uh, I'm not going to sit here and say I was great, but I did my job pretty well. And uh, so uh, I, I think I'm going to bet on myself that I'll figure this one out this coming year. That I, I can promise you this. Uh, this used to be my saying when I was younger. Now I'm getting older. So I, I know the end of the line's a little closer than it used to be. Uh, I used to say all the time, my team's going to play the right way or they're going to put me in a box or put me in a white jacket. Well, this coming year, it's either we're doing it the right way or they're putting me in a box or a white jacket. It's, it's the, the old sayings back in play. Dick and then Colin. Hi, Frank. With the new transfer rule and early NBA draft, you've, you've had several players that have decided to go in a different direction and move on now. Can you talk a little bit about the challenge of basically having to almost bring in a new team for next year? It's crazy, man. Dick, we we fought, we just had a board of director meeting call yesterday, and uh, and 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 there were leaders of the NCAA were on that call, which is how we do it every single year after the Final Four, uh, and we we talk about a lot of things. And we sat there and we told them, we told you so. We've been telling them for five years, like you guys cannot allow this to happen now. We, we, I don't know what goes on in swimming and, and some of the other sports, but in our sport, don't let this happen. It's going to be crazy. We're telling you, you know, but, you know, we're always the greedy coaches that worry about ourselves and all we care about is making money. And, and, and all the decision makers are sitting in offices and never interact with people. They just create rules and hit send on their computers. They pass the rules. Well, we've been telling them, we're the ones in people's homes. We're the ones that deal with, with the young people in our business. You know, we, we passed a rule. It is what it is. At the end of the day, you know what happens, Dick? We all adjust. That's what we do. We're coaches, man. We, we adjust. Somebody plays a zone, we adjust to the zone. Somebody goes to a press, we adjust to the press. It's how we live life. We adjust. So the rules created. Now we all have to adjust as coaches. And we've been preparing for this for a year. Uh, you know, now, you know, with this one-time transfer situation, it's, it's, I've said it before, it creates a bigger dynamic in, in, on, on your roster, like recruiting your team. You got to constantly recruit your team. You're not recruiting your new players. You're recruiting your team. And you have to do that. Um, and then you have to, uh, which is, by the way, why in the fall, I signed three, even though we had one senior, because I had a pretty good feel that there were two guys that were definitely leaving at the end of the year. So I signed three. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys, because that's a private matter for the players. <clears throat> but we're going to end up having to oversign in the fall. Why? To prepare ourselves for transfers in the spring, because it's going to happen. 
I don't, I haven't read, I haven't sat back and read the stats, but I'm pretty sure the number of transfer in the portal is touching 1500, if I'm not mistaken. And, and by the time, remember now, the semesters haven't even ended. Wait till these kids get home, get away from campus. And now they get around some friends and, 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 and people telling them, hey, bread opportunity over there. It, there's no, we're going to have 2,000 transfers in our 2,000 in our sport. Uh, so it, it's, but it, it's, uh, it's a new dynamic that we as coaches have been preparing for for a year. Uh, when you average over 800 transfers a year for the previous five years, and all of a sudden you open the floodgates, I predicted 1,500. And I thought I was on the high end of my prediction. It's going to be 2,000. And, uh, but it's, it's a new dynamic. It's a new, new direction. And, um, you know, it's, it's what we have to do. We adjust. Coaches adjust, man. That's, that's, the, that's the life we live in. We adjust. And, and we're just going to adjust to this time period, too. Colin and then Mike Uva. Frank, you mentioned, obviously, not doing a great job coaching. What were, outside of COVID, what were some of the problems that really plagued you guys, you felt like? And why do you think you're the man to be able to kind of help fix those things and get back to where you were a couple of years ago? I, I don't know if I think I'm the man, but I think I just explained to you, Colin, that, hey, you, listen, I, I, I don't know why everyone around here loves the gloom and doom of failure, okay? Uh, we just came off six consecutive winning seasons, bro. I, I, I don't know why that's so hard to understand. It's not like we went final four, 14 wins, 12 wins, 11 wins, six wins. Okay, we went final four. We regrouped, rebuilt our roster, had a winning season. The following year with, with grad transfers and kind of a makeshift kind of situation. The following year, we were all freshmen again. Okay, dealt with major injuries. Finished the season with seven players the last three games of the season. Okay, we still figured out a way to survive. And by the way, uh, finished fourth in the league. Okay, it's not, that's not falling apart. The year after, which is a year that got shut down for COVID, I, I don't, we had 18 wins. We were a win away. All our numbers, metrics, I don't know if you guys know this, but our metrics were NCAA worthy. Okay, we had to go beat Arkansas in the conference tournament. If we beat Arkansas in the conference tournament, we're in, all right, to the NCAA tournament. It's not like saying we had to go beat Baylor or Gonzaga this year. We had beaten Arkansas at Arkansas earlier in the year. Okay. So it's not like it was like this crazy mountain had to be climbed. So last year was a postseason team. So we went final four. There was a little drop and then we were rebuilding. This year just was a train wreck. I, I don't know. I don't know why, why, why we're acting like, the train was off the rails and we saw it coming for three years. And it's just, it, it had a bad year, man. Bad year, period. When you have two or three consecutive bad years, that's when you sit there and you say, okay, we got issues. We had a bad year. Now, as far as uh, what I did wrong, I, the whole COVID situation, it, it never allowed us. I'm big on people relationships, having people around, bringing everyone, communication. I can't sit around and tell you guys that I love the fact that I learned as a teacher and then tell you that I just care about running practice. I'm in constant education. I want to learn as much as I want to teach. And it's how I live my life. It's how I engage with all my players. Uh, I couldn't do that last year. So I needed to manage things differently. And I didn't. I just assumed that what I was doing was going to work. It didn't. Not because uh, I did. What's what's the wording I'm looking for? Not because I, I purposely omitted my job. I was dealing with a pandemic that asked me to do my job differently. A situation that didn't allow me to be the way I normally am. And then I, I just mismanaged the preseason because of that. So and then I've said this publicly and I'm not. Listen, when it's stuff I do wrong, I tell you. I'm not going to tell you about our players, but I'm going to tell you what I did wrong. And then I realized that I hadn't done my job the right way in the second half of the Houston game, which, by the way, I think they were pretty good, right? Like, we never get any credit because we always claim we play a bad schedule. 
We never get any credit for playing Houston. I think they were pretty good. But, and we're up seven in the second half. All right, just, just, you know, just for crap, you know what, and giggles, okay? Well, we couldn't finish the deal. That's when I noticed the way we handled that moment that our team needed some fixing. Well, you know what happened the next day? We went on shutdown. So on December 7th, shutdown, okay? I've, ex I, I've expressed this. It's not like we got shut down for seven days, practice for seven days, got shut down for seven days, practice for seven. We got shut down from December 7th. We practiced one time. We got shut down again. December, uh, let me see, January 2nd, 1st, 31st. December 29th was our first practice. Eight players, eight. 29th, the, the December 30th, I'm going backwards here. You got me thinking. I'm pretty sure we played A&M on January the 2nd, if I'm not mistaken. So we practiced for two days before that. So that's the 30th and the 31st, we had eight players. The day of the game, we had a ninth player, okay? Then we practiced <coughs> two more days with those nine guys, and we got Jalen McCreary, player number 10, uh, cleared the day of the Texas A&M game. Then we got shut down again the next day. And then not only did we get shut down, but me and my associate head coach both got put down for the count. And both of us got our rear ends kicked. Now, like I've expressed to you guys, I already knew I had to fix some issues. Well, guess what happened between December 7th and January 19th? You know what January 19th was, Colin? Is that the LSU game? the day after the LSU game, if I'm not mistaken, okay? Yeah. That's the first time that we had a full team at practice since December 5th, okay? And not only is it the first time, but that means that we had one, two, three, four, five, six practices since December 7th, six, okay? Five of which didn't have every player, had eight guys. So, and your two top coaches, however you want to word that, not around. Okay. So I don't know how you guys do business. I can't tell you timelines and how to play. I'm a math guy. So even if you ask me to write a sentence, it'd be an adventure. All right. But I can tell you my business. It's really hard to coach your team when that's the environment you're dealing with. And then once we regroup, man, I'm just telling you, I didn't have the fight. I couldn't tell you guys that because that, listen, I grew up in an era where you don't call in sick. I grew up in an era where you answer the bell. I grew up in an era where, where you got hurt on the field, you didn't lay down. Even if you had no idea what your name was, you figured out a way to get a sideline and then you fell down on the sideline and your players hit you. So no one knew that you were hurt. That's where I grew up. Okay. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just telling you who I am. And, and then lastly, I couldn't tell anybody how beat up I was because if I did, my mother would have died in her house in Miami worrying about me. I couldn't do that. I had to keep it away from people so she didn't worry. I feel great now. Am I going to do my job? What am I going to do? Like, why am I the man? I don't know if I'm the man for anything, but I know how to do my job. I've done it the right way. 35 out of 36 years in this business. I, Listen, I'm not going to give you details about my career, but I'll say this to you. I was a high school coach 16 years. My team played for the state championship 11 times, won eight of them. That means I was a part of winning there. I went to Northeastern, who was in last place in the America East when I got there. By the time I left, we were in second place, had back-to-back 20-win -back seasons. I went to Cincinnati. I had nothing to do with that. That was that was a, just a, an incredible two-year period of learning in my life. I was with Hugs for a year, and then a Andy Kennedy and I managed craziness the following year. And I go to Kansas State, which had never had not been to the NCAA tournament in a gazillion years. In my first year, we go to the tournament and win a game, and the rest is history. And I come here in the two winningest seasons in the history of the school. So why am I the man for the job? I don't know if I'm the man for anything, but I feel pretty confident that I know how to do my job and I know my situation. So I know how to, I, I don't know if I can fix another school. Like when I came here, I had no idea what I had to fix, but I was willing to take on the job. I figured it out. Well, now it's my job. I know what the things that I do wrong are. I know what the things I don't do right are and I'm going to fix them. 
And I know what the things our program needs because it's my program. I'm going to fix them. And does that mean we're going to win next year? No. Does that mean I'm going to be the coach here three years from now? No. It just means like my first year at K-State, I'm going to do my job as hard and as well as I ever have. And I'm going to take this day by day. It's how I live my life and it's how I'll live this next year. I, it's, you know, and then the, at the end, I, you know, at the end, when you're in our business, they love you one day, they hate you the next. So you can't get wrapped up in those emotions. You do your job every day. Why? For the people that started that, that's, that's why I'm excited right now because the guys like the ones that you just heard speaking, you know, but when you have Mike Kotsar from another country, sit there and say what he just said. And he's got a college degree. And I coached him as hard as any player I've ever coached. And that guy wouldn't trade it for a moment. You have PJ Dozier, who, who was a McDonald All-American, who a lot of people in this community tried to tell him to go to school somewhere other than here. But yet he believed in me. And now he, he's, all you gotta do is ask him. He'll tell you if he had to do it all over again, he doubled down on coming to South Carolina. Because playing for me and being a part of what we were, is what's allowed him to fulfill his dream. I, that's why I do this, man. I don't do this for contracts. I don't do this for money. I don't do this for approval or fame. I do this for that. And I'll continue to do it for that reason. We've got about 25 minutes um, left um, for availability and I've got nine hands raised. So we'll, we'll go with those, um, starting with Mike Uva and then Michael and Anna. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Frank, uh, you mentioned, you know, the previous six, six winning seasons. Um, and I think, you know, it goes without saying what you guys were able to do in the SEC in terms of being one of the top teams outside of, of this past season, of course. Mike, Mike, Mike. Yes. Are you serious? You saw that? Yeah. That we actually had good seasons in the SEC? Yeah, one of the top. It was outside of Kentucky. Is, is, that, Florida, public no is that public knowledge, Mike? I put it out there a couple times. Can you send it to me, Mike? Because I, I could have swore that we were in last place in the SEC every year. Holy cow. Wow. That's one of the most one, one, one of the most wins. I think it was tied with Tennessee outside of this past season. You guys were number three. Mike, I appreciate you, man. Holy. I'm going to buy you a beer next time I see you on my radio show. My God, that's you just you and the players just made me feel better. I actually know that we did something good around here. Appreciate you. I'll buy you the U of at Bojangles. Um, with that, I'm with that, to lose weight. With that, with that, with that being said, um, you know, people look at the contract extension; they don't see any change to the bone. Um, excuse me, the buyout. Do you feel like this is a kind of like a show me year? Do you feel like there's any added pressure, despite all the, like you said, the, the what you guys were able to accomplish outside of this past season? I told you, is it the contract I wanted? No, but when does any negotiation go? the way somebody wants it you know there's there's conformed by both sides that's why it's called a negotiation both groups agree if they didn't want me here they could have fired me you know but obviously they didn't want to fire me and i wanted to be here i think i made that public and i made that known i, I you know and, and i don't i don't run around and say things and make it sound nice i i tell people when it pertains to me i tell you what i feel and I wanted to be here. And I, I'm not worried. Like, do you realize the financial, financial crisis that every university in the country is in right now? And here's the worst part. We've, we've been bleeding money for the past year. The hardest days are going to be two years from now. The days of coaches making what I make right now in the next two, three years, probably not happening anywhere unless there's established contracts. I'm not going to, this university has paid me a boatload of money. They have allowed me to be their coach for nine years. Why am I going to drag them into the mud for selfish reasons to protect Frank Martin? So we, we came up to a place where we're going to reevaluate everything moving forward. I, I'm perfectly comfortable with the contract I got in place. Like everyone said, oh, you can't recruit, my God. Oh. Uh, uh, does it appear that we've had an issue uh, overcoming the contract situation and recruiting? What, what? Have you heard about our incoming freshmen say they're getting out of their letter? Have you heard, have you heard that one? Because a bunch of you guys on this call calling the recruits all the time, trying to figure out, hey, hey, what are you hearing? You coming? You're not coming. Have you heard any of them saying they're not coming? 
Did it impede us from recruiting here in the spring? No, you know, so it's, uh, um, it, it's just like the narrative out there that people don't want to play for me. Mike, I've been in the business 15 years. You think it's the first time somebody tells somebody, hey, Frank's going to yell at you. That, I, <laughs> come on, man. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a lazy, boring narrative that exists out there. You know what? Every coach is going to yell at you. Even the guys that smile and clap are going to yell at you. And, and uh, so it's, uh, I'm in a good place, man. I, I coached, I'm a high school guy. I made $2,000 coaching high school basketball. That was my best salary, 2,460 to be exact. Okay. And that's for a very successful high school coach. I, I coached my first year at K-State with no contract, zero. And the athletic, for the question earlier about if I get along with Ray Tanner, the athletic director that I worked for back then, the president I worked for back then, Tim Weiser is the associate <coughs> commissioner of the Big 12, one of my closest friends. The president, John Weefald, who's retired, one of my closest friends. I, and I coach without a contract. So, I, you know, I, I don't worry about those things, man. I'm, I'm the contrary. How many, how many power five guys can say they've been at a school for nine years? This school has allowed me to be here for nine years and paid me a boatload of money to represent the school. How can I be upset about anything? On the contrary, man, I got to do my job better. I did a bad job last year. It's the way this business works. If, if we, as coaches, we're going to be so fickle and so thin skinned that, that we're going to get our feelings hurt after a year like, like we just had. Man, then we're not going to be in this business very long. But on the contrary, now this is ha if that had happened after my second year, I wouldn't have been real happy. They've given me nine years and paid me a lot of money. They have this university has given me the ability to change the quality of my children's life. Why would I ever be mad at that? You know, and if they told me that it's enough, Frank, nine, ten years, it is what it is. It's time to move on. It's time to move on, man. It, it, you know, I, I, I don't have a sour bone in my body about anything here. I, I work for some incredible people, man. And, and, and do we agree on everything behind the scenes, Mike? No. And everyone and anyone that says they do are lying to you. But at the end of the day, I work for good people. And they've taken care of me and allowed me to do my job here. And that's all I can ever ask for. And moving forward, that's the plan. What else can I ask for? By the way, Mike, please send me that information. Could I, I could have sworn that we've been the last place team in the SEC for like nine consecutive years. Send me that info if you can. Gloom and doom, just, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Michael and Anna and then Mitch Brown. Hey, Frank. Um, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about just managing, obviously you talked a little bit about the transfer portal, um, but, but losing some guys, especially a guy like Justin Manaya, you know, someone who you've had for four years and has done a lot for you uh, with this team. I mean, just what did he mean? And some of these guys who are leaving, what did they mean to the program? And what is it like trying to replace those guys, especially in terms of culture and toughness and leadership and all of that? Yeah, no, obviously, uh, one, one, of the, uh, one of the guys that I expected to leave at the end of the year back in the fall was Justin. You know, his plan the whole time was to get his degree, which he's going to get here in a couple of weeks, and then pursue a professional career. That's been part of his journey the whole time. And, uh, um, and uh, but what he gave our program uh, when he came in his freshman year, which is the year after the Final Four, which was a revamped team. Um, and he gave us courage as a freshman to go win games uh, and, and, and never changed. And I felt really bad as this, this year was unfolding because I couldn't help him, you know, and he, he, he kind of uh, he cared so much that when he didn't play great and our team didn't play great, it kind of sent him into a funk. And, and then I, I just I'm telling you, I couldn't help him. I, I wanted to. I, I, I just didn't. I Usually uh, during the season, I'm up to like really late at night because I don't I, I think I've shared this with you guys. And I, I say this all the time. I'm not a great recruiter during the season because I'm so consumed with my team. Uh, I, I don't know. Some of you guys have the, 
you know, some of you guys have a great narrative that I'm a bad recruiter, period. It's funny. We, we've had four guys since I've been here that wear NBA uniforms today. It's the first time since Frank McGuire that one coach has four guys wear NBA uniforms. But then again, I, I miss recruits and I can't recruit anybody. But Mike, Mike, you might want to go back and maybe find some information on that because, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, we've been in last place because I can't recruit anybody. But uh, uh, but during the season, I, I do a crappy job of recruiting because I'm so consumed with my team, Mike, that that because I'm up all night watching film and it's it's the life I signed up for. So am I miserable? Yeah. Do I complain about it? No, I signed up for that life. I got to do my job. I couldn't do it. I get home. I fall asleep on the couch at seven o'clock at night out of exhaustion and just. It was really hard, man. It was miserable. I'd wake up the next day frustrated because I, I couldn't do my job to help my guys. And, um, and, and and the bad part is that then, so you rely on your staff. Chuck was beat up the same way I was. He was struggling. It was the same time as me. He was struggling the same way. And, uh, but, you know, but losing those, you know, guys that, that, that like Justin's going to be hard. You know, but we we plan for it and, and recruiting and uh, but the transfer portal it's a it's a brand new dynamic and uh, doesn't mean there's a there's a saying in in the coaching fraternity that when you take a transfer you bring their problems too now that uh, you don't just bring their points you bring their problems so um, and and so we you know every every guy that transfers is transferring for a reason so we have to manage that when they get here the good thing is that you start from scratch. Um, you know, I'm a different person than the previous coach for the new guys, just like the guys leaving here, they're going to go play for a new person than me. So you start from scratch from a relationship standpoint and, and, uh, but, but you're both more experienced as to managing the dynamic and, and, uh, you know, and you, you go, you don't, you don't get married hoping to get divorced. You know, you get married hoping to live a happily ever after life and, and that's that's where you go when you take transfers. You you get married uh, with the, the the hope and the joy that the relationship is going to get better through your experiences, and and then you can have guys like we just had on that video, uh, uh, raving about their experiences and their joy that that the the, the leadership, you know, the, the Collins question. Am I, I I don't know if I'm the man, but if you ask those guys, the ones that actually did it, they think I'm the right man for the job, and they're excited that I keep representing the uniform that they wore. Uh, so it's uh, um, uh, it's going to be hard. You don't lose Justin Manaya and you know and just replace him with the next guy. Uh, there, there's, it's going to be new personality, new stuff, and, uh, and that's that's. But but that's part of the journey, man. It's it's uh, sometimes you graduate the year after the Final Four. We graduated a bunch of guys, and 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 you know to the NBA and graduated them as players and. Um, uh, you know, it's part of the journey, man. That's, that's the beauty of coaching. Every year is different. Mitch and then Gene. Coach, obviously you talked about a fresh start coming up this off season and going into next season. Everybody that's on the roster and not in the transfer portal now, are you confident that they'll be back uh, for practice next season or training camp next season? Uh, yeah, I expect them to be back. I mean, uh, I, I, I Mitch is one of the things I spoke about before. Uh, I have candid conversations with players. I, I don't, it, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, I'm brutally honest with people. I'm brutally honest with you guys, which is kind of used against me sometimes, but I'm brutally honest with you guys. I, I, I don't, I don't work with mirrors. I don't try to uh, trick people into things. I'm, I'm into communication, education. It, I don't want to be around anybody that tells me what I want to hear. I want people to tell me the truth and I'm the same way, the other way. Um, so it's, uh, uh, I think they're going to be here. I mean, I'm planning on them being here. They're telling me they're going to be here. Their families are telling me they're going to be here. Um, so, uh, you know, but if for some reason they go home and they change your mind, it's the new world that we're living in. Uh, you know, uh, locally, we've, I think we've got five in the transfer portal, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, here's what's crazy. That's in the low end of power five basketball this year. 
So it, <laughs> that, that's how that's how wacky this this environment that we've created. Um, uh, if, if we end up with two thousand players in the portal, which I really think we're going to get there. That's like 40% of every roster, you know, it's that just to give you an idea. Uh, I, I just read somewhere where there's two power five schools where they have, they have nine in the transfer portal. Um, you know, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the guys we got in place that are coming back have played a lot for us. They've been very productive for us. Um, and uh, I'm excited for them. And I'm excited to, 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 make the connection between that group and the new guys and, and build it and go from there. Gene and then Pete. Hey, Frank, uh, you guys have turned over the roster a lot. Uh, the SEC is getting better and better. You are coming off your first self-described shitty season. Do you think you're going to make the NCAA tournament next season? I, I mean, you know, Gene, I, I, I kind of, the way you word the question kind of uh, creates the gloom and doom for the answer you're looking for. Uh, uh, I turn over the roster a lot. I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, the, we, we had a team this year that two years earlier had seven freshmen that were all on the roster for three years. So um, I don't know what that a lot means. Uh, we, we had five going to the transfer portal, which is in the low end of the power of five schools this year. So I'm still not sure what a lot means. If it, maybe you're just referring to this year, and do I think I'm going to make the NCAA tournament next year? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, I'm not into predictions. I didn't say that the first day I got hired here. Uh, that's the goal. The goal is to win your league championship. If you win your league championship, which has been my goal every year I've coached. That means it doesn't mean you're going to win your league championship, but it means you better compete with the teams that are going to win your league championship. And we've gotten really, really close here, really close. And we haven't quite got there. But what we've learned is that because we're that close, it allows us to become a good basketball team. And then you get in that tournament. And when you get in that tournament, you know, then it's a free for all. It's you have no idea who's going to win. It's all matchups. It's different than the regular season. It's different than your conference season. Uh, that's the objective. The objective is to get in the NCAA tournament. You know what, Gene? Uh, the year before, we were one win away from going to the NCAA tournament. And you know what happened, Gene? Nobody went. So, I, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, I, I, you know, my fourth year here, Gene, you know what? We're an NCAA tournament team. My team got railroaded. I don't care what anyone says. We got railroaded. Just think about this. We finished above a team in our league. We beat that team head to head. Our metrics were better. That team got in the tournament. We got left out. We got railroaded out of the NCAA tournament. I can't control. If we don't win the league championship, I can't control you know, the people have vote. So for me to sit here and tell you that I expect to be in it, that's my expectation every year, but I don't control that. It's, uh, uh, you know, we control it if we can figure out a win that conference tournament championship. If we do, then we'll definitely be in it. If not, I can tell you this, Gene, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. Uh, for 28 of my 29 years, I've approached my job on a daily basis uh, that either we're going to play the game the right way to give ourselves a chance or they're putting me in a box or in a white jacket. Take your pick. That's what's going to happen this coming year. All right. We've got uh, four more, Pete and then Phil. Uh, hey, Frank, just kind of getting back to uh, what Mitch was asking. I know Keyshawn and Jermaine have entered the uh, look, are going to explore the NBA draft. Yep. Are you confident that they'll uh, be back here if they don't uh, find what they're looking for there? And have you heard anything from A.J. Lawson yet? Do we know for sure what his decision is going to be about next year? Yeah, A.J.'s been home for two weeks, you know, because they like, take all these classes online. That's yeah. kind of the way it is. He's been home for about two weeks, and uh, um, he's been uh, with his family. Uh, this is – because see, A.J. doesn't get a – it doesn't work out, I'll go back year this year. Yeah. Once that decision's made this year, it's one way or the other. 
So, uh, so it's, it's a very, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's, it's careful. You know, the last couple of years, it can be reckless and there's always a safety net. Right now, there is no safety net for AJ. When he makes a decision, it's, it's, uh, it's all in. There's no, no turning back. The other two guys, every indication from them um, is, and, and by the way, I, I have unbelievable relationships with Jermaine and Keyshawn, just so you guys know. Um, every indication, and their families, every indication is that if the NBA, uh, they're, they're, they're exploring to get information. The rules are there to allow it. Why not do it? And, and you know, they're kids, man. They're young men now. They're not kids anymore. I keep calling them kids because you meet them when they're 16 years old. And then you end up coaching them and they're always your kids. It's like my children. I, my oldest son's a grown man. I still call him my kid. It pisses him off, but it, it's just part of the deal, you know? Um, um, but every indication is that they're in workouts every day. Keyshawn and Jermaine, they're, they're you know, the, uh, every indication is that they'll play for us next year. Bill and then John. Phil, mute button. Phil, did you fall asleep? Phil, we can't hear you, so we'll we'll come back. Go ahead, John. Frank, um, you've talked before about you know experience in the system, having guys uh, you know who've been on the team helps bring about success. I mean, right now you've got seven new guys, a half, half new team coming in. Uh, what, what gives you the encouragement that, that you can bring that group together and have them playing the way you want them to play? Well, I, number one, we get Alonzo Frank back, who was our starting frontline guy. Number two, Wildens Lebeck. If you saw Wildens this past year, in a difficult year, he played his best basketball at the end of the year. Why? Because he's starting to get comfortable. Um, you return Jermaine, who had a bad year. Jermaine was... Just I couldn't help him, and he didn't play well. Jermaine's a proven leader on this basketball team. Keyshawn, Keyshawn's electric uh, in, in the things that he does. He grew tremendously as a person and a player this past year. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I think you saw uh, Trayvon. He, he still got a ways to go, but there's some things he brought to the table that we didn't have anyone on our team that can do. And, and when you start adding those parts along with the transfers, the, the, you've heard me say in the past, it's, it, it takes time to build your team. Why? Because we're depending on 18-year-olds. And I coached the team with Mike Beasley and Bill Walker. Well, it was the worst record I had at Kansas State. But because of their talent, it was a, it, we, were will, we were able to win enough games to get into the NCAA tournament and win a game. By the way, I, I, I don't – Mike – Mike, you still here? Did you fall asleep along with Phil? Oh, I slept great last night. Yeah, I, you know, for the question earlier, like, you know, whether or not I can do my job or whatever it may be, just, Mike, I don't know if you know this one. I'm 10 and 5 in my career in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, it just, just a little personal note as far as my confidence level, the ability to coach a game. Um, but, you know, John, it's, it's, uh, it's the beauty of coaching, man is the guys that – you remember you, – you, John, you remember a guy named Sanderis Thornwell? You remember his sophomore year? He was pretty bad. You remember that? Yeah. He ended up doing all right, didn't he? Mm -hmm. you did, didn't he end up having a halfway decent career? You know, so Jermaine, I, I, think, I think we're going to be all right with Jermaine. I think we're going to be okay with Keyshawn. I think – uh, that if you actually pay attention to my track record, not last year, that guys actually get better as they go through the journey. So, so we're going to end up making those guys better. And those guys will take pride in being better. And the new guys with transfers being eligible right away. I, I'm going to use again in the past, Frank Booker. You remember that guy? When I signed them, a bunch of you guys probably sat around and said, What's Frank thinking about? He's taking a transfer from Florida Atlantic that averaged two points a game. Come on. Who, who, who wants to be a real man? Raise your hand and admit that I said that. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. 
Well, do you enjoy watching Frank Booker play? And he actually made 80 threes, you know? So, we, we, you know, I use him. Why? Because he was an immediate eligible transfer. So we're going to, these transfers we got coming in, and same with Wes Myers and, <laughs> and all, Trey Campbell and everyone else. Trey Campbell averaged two points a game at, at Georgetown, too. You know, and um, those guys will adapt to them. They'll adapt to us and we'll get it done with those transfers. And then I'm just telling you, those three freshmen we signed, it's unbelievable. Number one, they're really good. Number two, they're my best recruiters. Those three freshmen were calling the transfers to come to school here. This new world that we live in with DMing and all. These kids all communicate with each other. So the transfers are telling me, I'm trying to recruit the transfers. They're telling me like, yeah, man, I, so-and-so was hitting me on, on my DM. I'm, I'm sitting there laughing like, this is unbelievable. So we got guys that are incoming freshmen recruiting transfers to come join them to be on the team. That's the kind of enthusiasm they got for playing here. That's why I'm so excited because I know what's in place and the new guys, and I think the marriage and the personalities will work. Is it guaranteed? No, but that's the excitement. That's the enthusiasm that I have. Phil, are you there? All right, we'll go ahead to John Del Bianco. I think Phil's talking to his sources. I, you know. Frank, I know Seventh Woods went through uh, senior day ceremonies and everything. I was just wondering if he's going to be on the roster next season, given, you know, with that, with that free year of eligibility, has he told you whether or not he's, he'll be on the team? Yeah, he's trying, to, he's trying to get himself healthy. His injury was really severe. Uh, like he, he, his groin tear, it actually detached from the bone, uh, the groin did. So he, he's trying to get himself healthy uh, before making the decision. Obviously, he's been in college for, you know, for five years. Um, uh, he, he much rather try to pursue a professional career uh, but he's not in a place to make that decision yet. And, uh, uh, and with that, that extra for seniors, not counting against your 13 scholarships, there's no rush to make that decision. All right, Phil, we can see you. Go ahead. Phil, are you really wearing orange? Now he's frozen. Yeah, I think I think he's having some issues maybe with his Zoom. Uh, he 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 needs to fix his Zoom, his contacts. I mean, Phil, you Phil, we we got to work with you, man. We we Holy cow, Phil. Phil, you know I love you, brother. Phil, unfortunately, we can't hear you and 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 your screen keeps freezing, so I think we will go ahead and close today's press conference. Thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate it. And we'll see you all soon.